Во время фестиваля «Звезды белых ночей-2010» Уиллард Уайт дебютирует на сцене Мариинского театра, исполняя с Еленой Житковой оперу Бартака «Зама герцога Синяя борода». Но самая первая встреча петербургской публики с Уайтом произошла в декабре прошлого года, когда в концертном зале Мариинского театра певец принял участие в исполнении Тристана и Зольды Вагнера, осуждение Фауста Берлиоза и порадовал слушателей сольной программой, соединивший репертуар от белькантовых арий до американской классики 20 века. Тогда же и состоялась наша беседа. Поскольку уже в 1995 году королева Елизавета удостоила Уилларда Уайта звания кавалера Британской империи, то обращаться к нему необходимо по имени, добавляя почтительное «сэр». Итак, сэр Уиллард, вы находитесь здесь по приглашению маэстро Гергиева? Very impressive, and uh, and then the audience is there, so full of attention, so to the to the to the music. Needless to say, I was a little nervous. My first time ever in in Russia, and uh, singing with this orchestra that he handles so easily, so flexibly. Um, they're friends, of course, uh, <laughs> orchestra and maestro, it seems, and um, it was a great pleasure. Уиллард Уайт родился на Ямайке. Его отец был докером, мать домохозяйкой. Подростком он пел песни Нета Кинга Коула и Поля Робсона. Талантливого юношу пригласили выступать в спектаклях местного общества любителей оперы, где его и услышала знаменитая габаистка Эвелин Рутвелл, жена дирижера Джона Барберолли, и позвала учиться в Лондон. Но отец купил билет в Нью-Йорк. Так дешевле. А поскольку билет был только в один конец, то... Сир Уиллард, история вашей головокружительной карьеры напоминает историю Золушки. А какими были первые шаги? Может быть, вы расскажете немного о своей семье, о родителях, о братьях и сестрах? О, мой боже, сколько минут у нас? Ну, у меня есть одна сестра, красивая девушка. Ну, она 6 лет младше, чем я. И моя мама, красивая девушка, она не могла читать или писать, но она была полна любви. And my father was the strong, natural father figure, didn't speak very much. I sang quite a bit as a child. For my own pleasure, I chose to, sang, to sing, actually, um, I said once, instead of crying, because I did spend a long time crying as a young person, young man, longing for a certain level of love that I wanted from My mother, but my mother wasn't around because I had to go to school in another part of the country, and I missed her. And uh, but one day, being a big boy of about 12 years old, I was uh, realizing that I couldn't go back to mama's knees, and so I didn't know what to do. And uh, I said to myself, in the quietness of my garden, at the end of the garden, under a coconut tree. I said, there is a knot in my stomach. I feel very depressed. I do not want to continue my life this way. What can I do? There must be another way. Because at the same time, I'd seen other children running around quite happily. And I just wanted to have some of that too. 
And a voice said in my head, sing. And I thought, sing? I feel sad not singing when I'm sad. And the voice said, sing. So I started singing very quietly, very lazily. And then it grew. The singing grew louder. The key changed. I felt a certain power coming through the song. And before I realized it, I was actually living a transformation of that depressed, frustrated energy that I had. And um, I found this new power within me, a power that I was hoping that somebody would come along and put their arm around me and, says everything, and say that everything would be all right. But I've actually found out that even if someone put their arm around you and you're very sad, they cannot change the sadness. I have to change my sadness. And that is a very important energy in my life, that I can't blame anyone for my sadness. And I can't praise anyone for my happiness either. I have to choose to respond in a certain way. But it's also good to have people around who can share in your experience. Through that, I find a level of happiness in connection with other people and growing. And so I, I go around the world with this understanding that I have of myself, that my voice is not just for me. My voice is not about some great power that I have over anyone. I am a part of this world and my unique voice, we all have unique qualities, my unique voice is to enhance my understanding of myself and maybe encourage others to understand themselves and to embrace and grow through music, through song, through connection with others. У вас колоссальный репертуар. Вы прекрасно чувствуете себя в мире музыки разных веков и стран. Демонстрируете глубокое понимание различных стилей, владение разными языками. Как вам это удается? <laughs> I think I have a tremendous blessing from the universal energy, uh, divine energy. Teachers have encouraged me. Some teachers um, encourage me through negative experiences. And that, that for me is very interesting because uh, some negative experiences that I've had are actually very important, so-called negative experiences, are important for my understanding of where I need to turn. And so um, I encounter powerful positive energies and powerful negative energies, and I embrace them as best I can and utilize them. And music, my voice, my spirit, my body, my fear, my insecurity, my longing, is all of this go to make, to contribute to feeling the fear and doing it anyway, accepting the challenge, realizing that my life is one that is varied, what a gift, my life could have gone so many other directions. And I've chosen to believe in a certain quality inside me, not superior, not inferior to anyone else, but just me, singing all the things that I can sing in whatever language that is there, because that enriches me. When I embody this enrichment, I can embrace others in another way. So, that is a little part of my life. Sir Willard, а вы не думали написать книгу, чтобы рассказать о своей жизни, поделиться размышлениями о музыке, о мире? You think so? Yes. Well, <laughs> I'm considering it.